Loads of stuff to cover in today's video. I'll give you a few tips to stop big shelves from sagging. You'll get to see what I need this bit of metal for. We nearly ran out of skirting board. And of course, you'll get to see our finished downstairs toilet and utility room. So this little room has been through a lot. It started life as a kitchen, but we had to rip the floor out to fix the various damp issues. We fitted a new timber suspended floor with plenty of subfloor ventilation. It then became a temporary kitchen while we worked on the extension. And by the end of this video, you'll see the completed utility room and downstairs loo. But first, there's just a couple of little jobs to finish off. I'll show you all the shelving in a minute, but I just wanted to show you this kind of mid install because it's just little things that you have to give a little bit of thought to at this stage. So generally speaking, a support on the right and left would normally be more than enough, but because we've got a slightly longer span here, it's just over a meter, I am gonna do a support at the back just to stop the shelf kind of sagging in the middle. It'll probably be all right, but you know, if you've got really heavy stuff on the shelves that sits there for a long period of time, chipboard will eventually kind of sag down a bit. So a support at the back will help that. Absolute worst case, if it starts sagging towards the front, we could add a support at the front as well, but I'd rather not because it just looks a bit ugly. Obviously we've got the socket in the road, so there's not enough room to get a bit of wood over there. So all I'm gonna do is pop a piece of angle steel across there. It's nowhere near the socket. It's difficult to see where you are, but we've got a good gap between that and the socket. It's not like an electrocution risk or anything daft like that, but it just means that we've got a bit of extra support and I'll screw that in. The other thing that we've got to consider here is that we've got cables going up the wall here for this socket and behind the wall here is a myriad of pipes. So this is another reason why I was hoping to avoid putting anything on this back wall. So I'll just show you, I did take a picture of behind the wall before all the plasterboard was put on. So basically we've got the hot and cold to the bathroom above here and the central heating pipes for upstairs all run through this little cavity where, I don't know if you remember, the wall insets a little bit, so it just made sense. That's a good place for running pipes, but we are just gonna have to be a little bit careful. But we have got a stud on the right-hand side here that we can potentially screw into. So I think what we'll do, if we screw in at an angle towards the wall, so there's absolutely no risk that we're gonna come out and hit these pipes over here, I'm not gonna to attempt to hit this stud. It's far too close to these pipes. That's too much of a risk. But all we'll do is we'll go into this stud on the right and then we'll go middle over here and then over towards the left. And that should be absolutely fine. But always a good reason to take photographs as you go when you're doing a building project like this because you never know later on down the line when you're gonna need this sort of information.
so firmly in the realms of you couldn't make this up and I just had to show you this we've fitted all of the skirting boards and if you imagine throughout the renovation and extension project we must have bought I don't know 200 linear meters of skirting board or something like maybe more and we did vaguely plan it that we've got enough to do the utility and downstairs toilet but because we've ended up changing the shape of things slightly by having this off shot down here we've ended up needing a little bit more skirting board than planned and yeah you just couldn't make this up coming around this side this is literally all we've got left we've got this piece here I've got this little off cut here and by the way this is a lesson in don't throw away any of your scraps and off cuts until you're completely finished with a project because they can get you out of very tricky situations when you're nearly done. Bearing in mind this skirting board, I think it comes in 5.4 metre length, so it's a bit ridiculous to buy another 5 metres of skirting board for a tiny little bit. Anyway, so what we can do here, I'll do a scarf joint between the two, just an angled joint, and I'll glue it up and then put that piece in there. And then we've just got this piece here. Well, that ain't long enough to do along the back of the toilet. But there's no getting away from the fact that I am short by about 300 mil. So, luckily, we had some leftover architrave with a matching profile to this. So what I've ended up doing, this is the architrave at the top here. And I found just a scrap of any old skirting board. This is like a Taurus skirting board at the bottom. And I've just glued the two together using CA glue. And then I've just filled the joint using two part filler. And you can see the join on the edge, just there's a join there. But I don't think anyone will ever know that it's only got primer on it at the minute. Once that's glossed, you'll never know. And obviously I've ripped it to exactly the right height so that piece can go on the right hand side that piece can go on the left hand side I'll show you it once it's all done but jobs are good and saves buying another five meter length of skirting board for the sake of being 300 mil short So folks, let's take a look at how it all turned out. So we are very excited about this. <laughs> it's kind of the last major bit of the entire extension project, really. There's a lot of little jobs still to do. For example, I still haven't made the little cabinet thing to cover all of this up, but I was wanting to make a separate video about that so you can see what's involved. So don't forget to hit subscribe, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I'll take you through kind of from left to right of everything in the room. It's not a particularly massive room, so without a wide angle lens, I'm kind of struggling to fit everything in. Obviously, we've got the fire rated cap flap that you've already seen the video about. This is our main water mains coming in, if you remember back from when we first put the water supply in. We were debating boxing this in, but you know, it's a blooming utility room at the end of the day. So we've just kept that open. It's a little bit industrial, but we're quite happy with that. And it means really easy access to get to what is technically our secondary stopcock. We've got a primary stopcock that's on the other side of that room. Then working our way around, we've got the Bosch washing machine at the bottom and it's a Bosch heat pump tumble dryer at the top. A lot of you were asking about that side of things and to save you doing the legwork that we've ended up doing, we went for a Siri 4 
washing machine, but we went for the Series 6 heat pump tumble dryer just because it was more efficient. And I did work out all the numbers, and I think based on the way electricity prices went and all that sort of thing, this would end up paying for itself in two years or something. So I wouldn't suggest doing an upgrade just for the sake of it, unless you've got the money to, to spare. But we had a home for our old tumble dryer anyway, and as I say, it's worked out that this will pay for itself quite quickly. I will include links to both of these in the Amazon store. So there's a link to that down in the description below. And on my Amazon store, there's links to almost everything that we have used on our extension project or everything that we can find on Amazon. So if you're wondering what sort of taps we've bought, shelf brackets, everything down to ventilation and actual building materials, we've linked to as much of it as we can find on Amazon so that if you're wondering what you need, well, there's kind of a starting point. Anyway, some quick twin slot shelving up the right hand side of the boiler there, easy access to the boiler for maintenance, and then everything's just tidied up at the bottom there. Again, recycled, repurposed units, a 300 and a 400 unit down the bottom there, all soft clothes and all kind of doing the job. I'll show you the toilet in a minute, but then coming around this side, we've changed how we've done the storage very slightly. It's just gonna work out more practical. So we've got basically five big shelves at the end here. So I think each of these shelves is 500 mil deep. And then at the top here, we've got these great big long, these are 300 mil deep, but about two and a half meters long, right at the top there. Again, they're on, rails so they're adjustable and then of course we've got the coat hook rack with uh, 14 coat hooks on it 12 coat hooks on it sorry and believe it or not yes for a family of four we will use every single one of those what that'll actually let us do is get rid of this coat thing in our hallway which is just taking up kind of a crazy amount of space and looks pig ugly so we can get rid of that and then another project later down the line and build an inbuilt unit at the back there and that'll house all of the structured cabling stuff the router the switch and all that sort of thing same engineered oak wood flooring that we've used throughout the house not a lot of report on that really happy with the stuff that we'd installed elsewhere so we decided to run it through in here as well and then I'll take you into the downstairs toilet again it's kind of difficult to show you what's going on here because it's such a small room but again, we're really pleased with this. It's got a nice kind of cozy feel to it. We've repurposed the loo that used to be upstairs. So the toilet was effectively kind of free. As I say, at some point we are gonna build some sort of vanity unit for the little cloakroom sink, but you know, it's not offensive. I've seen a lot worse, but it would just give a little bit of extra storage space as well. And it would cover up the ugly bottle trap. We actually struggled to find any kind of splash back that we were happy with. So we've ended up using actual real solid oak behind it. It's not going to be getting wet on a regular basis. So that will be absolutely fine. And as I say, it matches all of the oak elsewhere, including the solid oak shelf that I've put in at the top here, which I'm not sure if you've noticed, but there's no visible fixings on that. In case you're wondering how that works, I've just routed into the end of the oak and just got two screws on either side and this, the whole shelf kind of slides in. Really pleased with that. You can't really do that with softwoods because it would probably end up splitting the wood, but oak is so tough, you can get away with uh, only having minimal support. I mean, I still wouldn't put lead weights on it, but for books and pictures and things, it is absolutely fine. That's my granddad at the top there. And you know, generally speaking, I think everything's turned out pretty well. Obviously I'm no plasterer, so just ignore this. I'm only joking, I didn't do that. The plasterers did that. I just taped and filled the joint around there. Tricky to focus on this, but again, I've just taped and jointed the joint between the boards at the top and you can't see it at all. And same for the joint between the boards up there as well. You just can't see it. Probably the biggest taping and jointing job I've ever done. I am no plasterer. I can't plaster to save my life, but it's come out all right. I think our only regret is that we used that stupid um, joint tape corner bead stuff. So it comes on a roll and it's got like metal in it and whatnot. 
and oh I'll never use that again. A couple of days after it was all sanded down and painted and everything it was all looking perfect and then we caught a ladder on this edge here and it chipped off straight away. It's so soft I'll never use that again. I'd rather use the metal edge bead even if I'm taping and jointing. Let us know if you're a plasterer let us know in the comments what you would do if you're just taping and jointing and you're not doing a full wet coat of plaster. Kinetic switches, so these are effectively remote light switches, which means that you can have it inside the toilet because there's no electrics going to it. So really happy with that, absolutely works great. Also a kinetic switch for the main utility room light switch as well. And they just go back to a receiver hidden behind the access panel up there. I think the only bit of my plastering attempt that I wasn't happy with is underneath that edge. The front edge is fine but the underside, the tape kind of blew up a little bit and I thought it might shrink back but it never really did. But because it's in shadow honestly you can't see it. You'd have to be looking really really closely and yeah you know sometimes life's too short. That bit of plaster that blew out, remember when I was putting this wall in and the whole bit of plasterboard just kind of um, crumbled away. That was in that corner down there somewhere. Again, you can't really see it. Tubular latch down the bottom. And then we've just got the wonderful electro brass painted kind of bright yellow privacy vacant engaged latch at the top. What else do I need to tell you about? I think that's it. If you've got any questions, pop them down in the comments below. As I say, we've got a video coming out all about the door and the door frame and the latch and probably a few other things as well, but I wanted to get the full kind of reveal video out there so this doesn't drag on forever. And not only that, but Mrs. Mack is desperate to make use of this room. So now that I've shown you it empty, we might as well fill the space up. So light magic. And there we go. My word, that didn't take long to fill up at all. And I told you would make use of every single one of these hooks. Bear in mind that there's like a double hook on each one. So that's uh, 24 hooks used up straight away. You're going to get an insight into the Max life here. So yeah, a bit of behind the scenes stuff. You see, the thing is, when you live in a place like northeast England, where sometimes it can be like 30, 35 degrees during summer and then you can obviously get a fair bit of rain and then in the winter it can be down to like minus 5, minus 10. Well, you have to have a full range of coats for every weather. So we've got waterproofs on the left and then winter woolies and then just random kind of middle of the road denim jackets, leather jackets, stuff like that hoodies, obviously obligatory hats on the end as well, and then even more hats and bags over on this side on another three hooks. Plus we've got our array of shoes down the bottom here, and that's not even all of them. We've got more shoes in bags like walking boots and stuff like that around the corner that don't get used as often. But yeah, for a family of four in the northeast of England, that's kind of what life looks like. Anyway, the long-term plan for these top shelves is more for kind of pantry type storage. So obviously if we're going to start growing stuff in the garden in any serious kind of way, we're probably going to end up pickling stuff and having jars of stuff. So we need somewhere to store all that sort of thing. So this is kind of um, out of the road long-term storage up the top there. All of our camping gear, oh my word, we can just grab camping gear when we need it. It makes such a massive difference. Chicken still likes to use his cat bed, so we've got it in the little corner there. He seems to like it up there. Uh, cat food at the minute's just kind of hidden down the bottom there. Nugget seems to prefer to sleep on top of the tumble dryer. Anyway, a couple of other things I wanted to show you that uh, I forgot to tell you about earlier, but yeah, I know a lot of you are going to ask about stacking uh, a tumble dryer on top of a washing machine. You should technically use a stacking kit, and yeah, I should probably not advise you to do it the way that we've done it, but honestly, We've done it like this for over 20 years and never had a problem with uh, a tumble dryer sitting on top of a washing machine. But yeah, if you want to spend 50 quid on a stacking kit, ideally what I would do is build a cabinet for that to be housed in. But these can't go any further to the left, otherwise it's really awkward opening this door. So if we were to build a cabinet wide enough, if you imagine the thickness of the wood and then allowing a bit of a gap so that you can actually get the washing machine tumble dryer into the cabinet, then we're going to be eating away at 
our tiny little bit of workspace that we've got here and we did want the sink and we've got the drainer on the sink so we really didn't want to make this area any smaller than it is so we are happy having the tumble dryer directly on top of the washing machine but you know you do you use a stacking kit if you want to use a stacking kit but this has been in use for quite a long time now and there's been no movement whatsoever basically because there's a little ridge on top of here i don't know if you can see but the feet for the tumble dryer just sit inside that ridge it can't possibly fall off the other thing i didn't like about the stacking kit is i think you have to drill into the top of the washing machine to attach the stacking kit to the washing machine i didn't particularly like the idea of doing that but you know for the more risk averse out there buy the proper stacking kit if you've got the space i think the better solution is to build a cabinet like an enclosure to put the whole thing in so that the tumble dryer isn't even touching the washing machine but honestly with these modern washing machines they're so stable when they're running they're so quiet as well there's just no movement of the tumble dryer at all as long as you've got the washing machine nice and level and nice and stable it's not rocking about there's a fan switch by the way which is just for the manual control of the well both fans so when we need it we turn it on simple as that obviously we've got the isolation up at the top but i struggled to find a switch that just said fan that didn't also say that it was an isolator because that is not an isolator it's literally just an on-off switch but as I say, that controls both rooms and we've been keeping an eye on humidity and all that sort of thing. And as I say, with modern tumble dryers, washing machines, humidity is not a problem. But if it is something that concerns you, get a little humidity detector like this. This is a Govi one. It'll log everything to an app. The humidity is going up from the humidity from my hands, by the way. That's not from this room. If I put this down somewhere, we'll pop it there. The humidity will go back down. A couple of you had commented on the tap saying that these taps are notorious for um, exploding. I, I think by what I've read into it, there's been some early design faults on this particular type of tap. I don't see how this could possibly come off. I mean, it's got two grub screws holding it in and it's absolutely solid. That ain't going anywhere. But I guess if the grub screws haven't been tightened properly or it hasn't been pushed down into the fitting properly, then yeah, you could end up with a bit of a disaster with a tap like that if it decides to explode off the top. But yeah, watch this space. If anything goes wrong, I will tell you about it because I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. So if we run into a problem, I will tell you. What I do like though, it's almost like a laminar flow you get out of this tap. I'm, I'm really impressed with the uh, quality of the flow of water that you get out of it. Nice bit of engineering there, I think. Look at that. No drips at all when you turn it off. And by the way, there you can see the humidity is coming back down. We are at 60% humidity everywhere, inside and outside the house, because it hasn't stopped raining for about a month here. I know parts of the world are getting heat waves and things, but honestly, we've had one of the worst Julys that I can remember, probably in my lifetime. There's that skirting board join, by the way. I'm not sure if you can see it. So we've ended up with just enough skirting to get around the back of the loo and everything. So all good there. I still haven't got round to ordering more pipe collars for around the bottom of here, which I will pop some temporary pipe collars around those just until I get round to building the vanity unit thing, because that'll probably take years before I get round to doing that. Same for up there, don't judge. I still need to fit a few pipe collars up there as well. Briefly talked about access panels. We've got access panels everywhere because it's a utility room and it makes life so much easier that we can get into this box at the top here where we've got isolation valves for the water and get access to all the like um, pipe connections and things up there as well. These shelves over by the sink are turning out to be really handy. But again, there's loads of space on there to put extra, you know, cleaning materials, stocks of cleaning materials. And even under the sink and stuff, there's still loads of spare room under there. So we've only got really that front row of stuff. So there's loads of stuff we can do to kind of make even better use of the space. But you can kind of see how we're living now. And uh, yeah, it's kind of nice that this job is finally done. So folks, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. I will be making a video covering the costs of this and also what we've spent on the entire renovation so far. So yeah, it's about time we're totted up how much we've spent. I don't even want to think about it. Now that we've got rid of the coats and junk from this corner, as I say, Internet Central over here, and build a nice little built-in unit, like a corner unit thing to house all of that. 
tidy all that up that'll look great again video all about that coming up and obviously as per usual if you've got any questions or comments or anything like that love to hear from you pop it down below what would you do differently what were your favorite parts about the project how have you got your utility laid out do you have a utility room do you have a room that you could maybe use as a utility room like convert a garage or something like that it's such a handy space to have honestly anyway next videos that are coming up i'm going to be talking about the anatomy of a door frame how uk door frames are put together i've got a little video about the the handle arrangement and various tips surrounding that so there's a few other little videos popping up around that so don't think you're going mad when it suddenly looks like the utility room isn't finished and then i've got a whole load of videos about tools coming up because i want to talk about a lot of the tools that we've used on this project some of the good tools some of the bad investments that we've made hiring versus buying all that sort of jazz anyway folks for now we'll leave it there as per usual look after each other be nice to one another and we shall see you next time tatty bye